Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week we try to take a look at a couple of upcoming races in Hong Kong, try to isolate a particular angle to the race that we might look back on later as having been decisive. Well, on Saturday at Sha Tin, it's Hong Kong Macau Trophy Day, and that's the one day a year when uh, the Macau horses come over and try to take on the Hong Kong gallopers. And over time, the balance of power has definitely been with the Hong Kong horses. So good luck to the Macau horses coming over to beat a pretty decent uh, team this year. But that doesn't mean that everyone from Macau has to go home empty handed, as we'll see. Well, the first race I want to take a look at on Saturday is race four, and our winning factor here, the tempo. And when we look at the field for this race, a couple of names really stand out. Zach Purton's mount, uh, Glen Ely General's already a winner in class four. And uh, the first starter has trialled quite well, a speedy missile, he looks a chance. And the horse that I think will be successful, Little Wise Man from the Frankie Law Stable. Well, as I said, uh, it's the Hong Kong Macau Day, and uh, that means that we get Macau jockeys riding at Sha Tin, as well as Macau horses racing. And 12 months ago on this day, trainer Frankie Law put his brother-in-law, a Macau jockey called Peter Ho, on a winner, Voyage King, and I think he's going to do it again this year. Now, the horse in question is Little Wise Man, and if we go back to race 490 of this season, uh, we see the horse uh, in a race at Happy Valley. There's a very strong pace here, as you can see from our heat map. And uh, the strong pace enabled uh, horses to run on in the race. And here's Little Wise Man charging home into second placing. Now we go ahead to his most recent appearance. This is in race 567. And the pace wasn't quite the same here uh, that uh, Little Wise Man stepped out at Happy Valley. This time the speed was very slow in the middle stages. And as a result, he was running on again at the finish, but he wasn't able to give a start to Precious Sweetie and outrun him down the final 400 metres. So one race was fast, the other race too slow. But I think Saturday's race is the Goldilocks solution, just right. If we take a look at the map for this race, uh, we haven't really talked about the opposition here yet, but uh, Zach Purton on the main danger Glen Ely Generals will likely give him a perfect trip sitting just behind the leaders. And uh, meanwhile, Peter Ho is probably going to get well back from a wide gate on Little Wise Man. So uh, without any pace in the race, his chances of running Burton's ride down might have been forlorn. But if you look at this, we have quite a number of possible leaders. I think the lead looks competitive enough to be able to bring the closers into it over the final stages. So the tip in race four, Little Wise Man his winning factor, the tempo. I think under different circumstances, Glen Ely Generals with a head start might have been uh, pretty hard to beat, but I think the tempo will be just right for Little Wise Man here, and Frankie Law can put his brother-in-law on a winner once again. For the second race we're going to examine, let's go across to race 10, and our winning factor here, the class rise. Now look down the field here, there are only two horses that catch my eye that are interesting as winning chances. And they are Pickin from the John Size Yard and Band of Brothers from Paul O'Sullivan's stable. Now I often speak on the winning factor about the class rise factor and uh, it's counterintuitive but horses going up in class uh, win twice as often in Hong Kong as horses dropping in class. Now, uh, obviously these trends can change over time and often the um, figures I show you are for extended periods, five years, 10 years. So I thought we'd have a quick look and make sure that uh, this trend is still as strong as ever during the current season. So if you have a look at this uh, uh, graphic I'm going to show you here, and uh, you can actually see that not only has uh, the trend of horses up in grade uh, winning still uh, vastly superior to horses down in grade, uh, it's actually an improvement this season on where it has been over the past five years. And if we look at horses coming up in grade off a win, again, that's also uh, showing a positive trend over and above where it was previously. So it's a very, very powerful angle to take. Now we're going to have a look at both Pickin and Band of Brothers here. And if we go back uh, three starts, Pickin was the horse rising in class off a win, and this is how he handled the rise to class three. 
Joe Marrera was able to give him a lovely run just behind the pace and he cleared out for a win with plenty of authority. Now subsequent to that, uh, he's blotted his copybook a little bit. He had a blood in trachea event at his next start. Then he didn't race for two months and he was caught wide at his next race uh, before finishing out of the placings. In the meantime, Band of Brothers has been putting his record together with back-to-back -to -back wins in Class 4. We're going to have a look at his latest win. And if we go to race 595, this was more workmanlike uh, than impressive, I guess, from Band of Brothers. He uh, sits off the pace and uh, grinds away too strongly for his rivals here. But keep in mind, he carried 133 pounds in the saddle here and drops to 121 on Saturday. But crucially, he keeps Zach Purton. Now, if we look at the map, uh, Pickin actually looks to get the kind of run here that he enjoyed in that win that we saw. He'll be up ahead of Band of Brothers, I expect, and going clear in the straight. And then it will be up to Band of Brothers to run him down with the aid of a little uh, weight difference between the two. But between the pair, the tip for me in race 10 is Band of Brothers. His winning factor, the class rise. He will be behind his main rival, Pickin. There doesn't look to be a lot of speed, so he will have a little bit to do once they turn heads for home. And Pickin is already a winner in Class 3. But as we've seen from the figures and over time, uh, the record of these horses rising in grade into Class 3 is very good. They seem to handle it with aplomb, and that's going to make the winning difference. Well, that's it from the winning factor this week. Good luck on Saturday. We'll see you next time.